Hello and welcome to the Pakistani channel. These are your hosts, Christian Sawyer, and with me is Ashley. And today we're hosting our special guests, Emily Johansson, Jesse Dewey, and Megan Butcher. Thanks, we're all very glad to be here. Today we are going to be talking about the future of Pakistan holds in the year 2030, and we have brought our special guests to discuss that with us. Would you guys mind introducing yourselves and your specialties? We'll start with Emily, then Jesse, and then Megan. All right, hi guys. So like we said, my name is Emily, and I graduated with a PhD in macroeconomics, and now I work as an economist that, that studies economies around the world. Hello everyone, my name is Jesse Dewey, and I'm a professor at Arizona State University, where I teach Pakistan studies with a focus on education. Hello everyone, it's so good to be here tonight. My name is Megan Butcher and I am the Overseas Warfare Investigator for the government. Great, thanks so much. To start it off, Emily, do you want to tell us about where you see the economy of Pakistan heading? Yes, I would love to. Well, according to the World Bank, Pakistan has been on a very good growth recovery, but it's not necessarily often that government's doing. It's been mostly from outside sources like low oil prices, for example, but if they want this growth to continue, their government is going to have to step up their game. One problem they're having is that their exports are going down slowly but surely. If they want to be competitive global exports, they will have to figure out a way to fix that problem. While the World Bank believes their economy will continue to grow, the government must continue to work on the country's structural reform and keep passing bills like boosting tax revenue, strengthening the business environment, expanding the electrical supply, and many more, but we don't really have time to get into all that here. I think that in order for Pakistan to accomplish this, they need smart, educated individuals to pass these bills and figure out what would be best for the country. Speaking of education, Jesse, hasn't the education system in Pakistan improved lately, especially for women? Hi, Ashley. Great question about the education in Pakistan. The education in Pakistan has indeed come a long way, especially for females. Women and other individuals were continually being persecuted by groups, such as the Tal Taliban. But due to the Taliban group being broken apart, the education system in Pakistan has flourished. Even the liter literacy rate has skyrocketed. Funding has been increased in gaining assistance from other countries, such as the United States, which has allowed for competitive individuals in the workplace. It also seems that many, especially parents, encourage religious education. Oh, I read some paper recently about religion in Pakistan. Nice. Tell us about it. I read an article in the Huffington Post about religious minorities there. And obviously there's a large amount of Muslims. And I think the article said there were 96% Muslims in Pakistan. But religious minorities are growing, especially among Hindus. Speaking about religion and the Muslims, I hope in the future Pakistan is able to get over their differences. They have already gone through so many struggles and violent times with the two main religious groups, Muslims and Hindus. It is too bad that the violence and warfare continue to plague Pakistan and neighboring countries. I feel like the whole start of the war on terror began with the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Although these groups were headquartered in Afghanistan, Pakistan has had a major role in assisting the control and takedown of these bad forces. Their leaders, Khalid Mohammed and Osama bin Laden, were captured and killed by the U.S. in Afghanistan, all thanks to Pakistan and letting us use their Pakistan bases in Afghanistan. Since that time, starting in 2011, there has been a new form of warfare called drone warfare. This is an operation that President Obama uses as a targeted killing. These drones will fly over specific territories and regions where the United States knows terrorist groups are located, and they'll send off missiles or shoot the terrorists down. This is not a popular method by the legal rights activists, but many prefer this way, so our troops don't have to go in harm's way. Hopefully soon this war on terror can end in Pakistan and its neighboring countries can finally have peace and stability. Oh, I have something that relates to that. I read an article called the Nation's Encyclopedia about industry that said Pakistan's industrial um, sector accounts for about 24% of its GDP. Cotton textile production and apparel manufacturing are Pakistan's largest largest industry, according to about 66% of the merchandise export and almost 40% of the employed labor force. 
Thank you, Ashley. It's important to learn about Pakistan and the different things that are going on over there because we need to know all the difficult things they're going through, especially so that we can help them get through the hard times. That's all the time we have got today. Thanks for everyone who has was on our show today and thank you for our audience for tuning in. We hope you tune in with us next week.